the author Roald Dahl said, those who don't believe in magic will never find it. And that the greatest secrets are always hidden in the most unlikely places. I think every magician can relate to this. Magic is a craft built on secrets, and we look for them in the most improbable locations. It's about taking the everyday and finding within it the possibility of illusions. We take the things you're most familiar with, a cup, a ball, a handkerchief, a rabbit, a human being, and we do something impossible with it. Because we are always looking for the magic, we develop a different way of looking at the world. We're obsessively curious. I cannot go into a hardware store without spending hours picking up those blister-packed items off the racks and wonder what else I could do with them. And I'm not interested in hammering nails or sawing wood, and I have no ideas what these items would do in the real world. But I can see endless possibilities for them in the magic world. It's something magicians have in common with hackers. <laughs> we can't help but look beyond the ordinary function of an object to discover its hidden attributes. To magicians, the world is like the matrix, where surface familiarity hides a far more interesting domain, where objects and ideas can be twisted, morphed, manipulated to do things they were never designed to do. This undermining of audience expectations is how magicians design tricks. It's how ladies are sewn in half, elephants made to disappear, and bullets caught between the teeth. The way in which reality can be sabotaged to produce an unexpected illusion are the secrets of magic. Now, many of the things that were considered magic hundreds of years ago are still considered magic today. That's why the classics of magic are still being performed. The cut and restored rope, the Chinese linking rings. These age-old tricks defy the fundamental laws of nature, and those laws do not change. Now, it's possible that one day, science will make self-healing ropes or metal rings that can pass through each other. Science will make real what once was considered magic, which is why magicians must always stay ahead of the reality curve. To me, magic is about making possible today what science will make a reality tomorrow. We prototype the future. More than a century ago, magicians showed their audiences things that were impossible at that time. Robots, wireless powers, talking machines, interactive screens. What once was considered magic is now a reality. Today, we have devices in our lives that would have been considered magical not too many years ago. The mobile phone, the internet, computers. So the question is, how does the magician add a layer of illusion to objects that already have almost magical properties of their own? So with that in mind, I created these. <laughs> You probably all heard of Google's Project Glass. It's new technology. You look through them, the world you see is augmented with data. Names of places, monuments, buildings. Maybe one day even the names of the people that pass us on the street. So these are my illusion glasses. They're, they're not Google Glass, obviously. <laughs> but when you look through them, you get a glimpse into the mind of a cyber illusionist. Hello, TEDx Beacon Street. <laughs> So that's what I'm seeing right now. So I'll show you what I mean. All I need is a, a playing card. Uh, any card will do. Let's uh, take this one and let's uh, mark it so we recognize it when we see it again. Okay. Let's to relax me just a little bit. And let's put it somewhere in the deck, just like this. Okay. And uh, let's start up the system. So for system those of ready. you who don't play cards, a deck of cards is made up of four different suits. There's hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. Cards are amongst the oldest of symbols and have been interpreted in many different ways. 
in each of the four suits, they represent the four seasons. So there's spring, summer, fall, and winter. My favorite season is winter. Oh, mine too. Winter is like magic. It involves visual wonder, drastic change, and a, a delicate balance between its physical states. So in each of the four suits, there's a total of 13 cards. Each card represents a phase of the 13 lunar cycles. So over here is low tides, and then over here is high tides, and then in the middle, of course, is the moon. The moon is one of the most potent centers of magic. Well, there are two colors in the deck of cards. There's the color red and the color black, representing the constant change from day tonight. Marco, I did not know you could do that. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> In a complete deck of cards, there are 52 cards, which represent the 52 weeks of the year. If you total all the spots on a deck of cards, the result is 365. 365, that's the number of days between each of our birthdays. Let's uh, make a wish. <laughs> Don't tell or it won't come true. As a matter of fact, it was on my sixth birthday that I received my first deck of cards. And ever since that day, I traveled around the world entertaining boys and girls, men and women, husbands and wives, even kings and queens. And who are these? Ah, uh, mischief makers, watch. Hey, wake up. Whoa. Are you ready? Ready. Let me see what you got. Presenting my Ah, uh, watch out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah. But today, I am performing for a different kind of audience. Sign card detected. Now, sometimes people ask me, hey, Marco, to do this kind of work, do you just work from 9 till 5? Of course not. Magic is a 24-7 job. I don't literally mean 24 hours, 7 days a week. 24-7 would be a little bit of an exaggeration. It does take practice. Now, some people say, well, magic, that's obviously the work of some evil, supernatural force. <laughs> to this, I just say, no, no. Okay, in German, it's nine, nine. Magic isn't really that intense. I have to warn you though, if you ever play with somebody who deals cards like this, don't play for money. Why not? That's a very good hand. The odds of getting it are 4,165 to 1. Ah, uh, true, but I think my hand is better. Uh, I guess we beat the odds. I think you got your birthday wish. And that leaves me with the last and most important card of all. And unlike anything else you've just seen, virtual or not, this is without a question the real thing. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.